Klopfer. I'm a professor at MIT. I run the teacher education program as well as a group we call the Education Arcade. I'm also co-faculty director for the PK-12 initiative within JWell. JWell is the Jamil World Education Lab and um, it's, the, it's a, a new program that started at MIT just within the last year to really sort of basically improve education everywhere um, to make it accessible, to make it uh, world-class education to, to all, all those people in the world who, can, who desire to have that education. Uh, within JWell, we have three different divisions. We have the PK-12 division, um, which I'm co-faculty director for, and we also have a university-level education and a workforce-level um, education as well. Uh, my work focuses on PK-12 education, both in my sort of faculty work as well as within JWell. Um, and in that space, we sort of think about really work from pre-kindergarten all the way on through, through uh, secondary school and how we think about how we can improve that um, all around the world, um, both domestically and internationally. M MIT is well known for our STEM education on campus, um, what we do for our own students, and in terms of even how we think about spreading that model around the world um, to other universities who look to, to emulate the education that we do here at MIT um, within the STEM fields. Um, and, uh, and that actually has, uh, maybe not as well known, but uh, it's actually a lot of work has gone on in the pre-college level as well over the years. There's been a major physics curriculum in the 1960s that was developed here, the PSSC. Um, there's been work, uh, there's hundreds of programs on campus that do sort of both local dissemination as well as international and worldwide dissemination of educational initiatives at the pre-college level. It's certainly not uh, as much on the radar as, as what we do at the university level here, but it's something that's been a fabric of MIT for, for quite some time. I think one of the reasons why uh, people sort of look to MIT in this space is because of our STEM expertise and because we're not sort of I'll say hampered by um, sort of a legacy um, uh, uh, structures that we have in place in, in pre-college education. Uh, a lot of other universities around the country sort of feel like they'd like to be more progressive in terms of the way they think about their work, but they're sometimes rooted in, a in traditional um, structures that w exist within those universities that may not actually allow the sort of interdisciplinary integrative kind of work that we think about um, needing to be done in the place of pre-college education. Here at MIT, we're sort of experts in how do we tackle problems? Um, and when we tackle those problems, we don't necessarily think about the disciplinary boundaries um, that, might, uh, that we might face along the way. We're, we're famous for having centers here for working on problems like energy and the environment, cancer, um, most recently. Um, and we think we can apply that same lens to, to education as we think about pre-college education um, and how we can lend some of the expertise that we do have in doing things in the past, but yet not be bound by a lot of the barriers um, that exist within structures um, of existing institutions that would sort of prevent that interdisciplinary um, boundary, uh, crossing of boundaries. So we think about things like economics, we think about things like brain science, we think about things like um, you know, the, the STEM fields themselves and how those all integrate to help us solve these problems. Um, here we're able to do those kinds of things um, and I think that's really an asset that we have at MIT and, and why we can sort of contribute in a unique way to this problem. So in the, in the pre-college space within JWell, we're, again, we're looking to sort of solve some of the world's biggest educational problems. In some ways we think about some things that we um, were interested in doing and that we would bring to the table in that, in that regard. In other ways we're sort of here to listen and think about what are the major challenges that we have today. Um, so we think about things like refugee education, which has really sur surfaced um, in many places around the world. How do we help contribute to that? Um, we've th th thought about things like uh, uh, pre-K pre, uh, pre uh, education. How do we contribute to early childhood education? You know, in many places around the world, um, that kind of education is only available to, to certain sectors of people. How do we sort of make that more accessible, more, more helpful, more beneficial, and more available? Um, Things that like STEM curriculum is another thing that we've, we think a lot about. Um, how do we sort of create curriculum and share curriculum around the world? Um, I think in a lot of ways that's something that, that's the place that we're sort of most ready to contribute today um, because we've been doing that for quite some time. Uh, but it's something that we, we feel like needs to grow um, and needs to uh, scale in a lot of ways. Um, a lot of the things we've done here have been sort of smaller projects um, and we think about ways that we might be able to scale some of those things and make them more sustainable. Um, so I think those are some of the things we think about. Um, um, along with a lot of those goes teacher education. How do we sort of think about preparing teachers around the world um, in more scalable, more effective ways? Um, it's something that we've been doing already. You know, I, I do teacher education here at MIT. Some of my other colleagues do teacher education. We've been involved in some larger educational initiatives preparing um, both in-service and pre-service teachers around the world. Uh, and, um, and that's something that I think that's going to be really important to, to solving the problem is how we, how we make teachers really ready to be able to to advance their students um, in different ways. 
And that's going to need to be uh, uh, not a one-size-fits-all solution. There's different sort of constraints and affordances as we work around the, around the world um, in different communities. Uh, some, you know, access to technology, access to well-prepared teacher workforce, um, the way that the role of education in that, in that country or states' uh, thinking um, all play a role in how we have to try to solve those problems.